Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you and may He guide all of us to the right path and to the truth. Today it's our last and final episode of the proof that Islam is the truth. We've been through many different amazing things. But the last thing that we want to finish with today are some of the signs of the last day. Things that the Prophet Muhammad said that would happen before the end of time. And of course, the first thing the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, the first thing that he said would be, the first of the signs of the last day is his death. And the last day is soon upon us. And that's what the Prophet said then, 1,400 years ago. How close must it be now? Let's look at some of the things the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said in various narrations. First of all, the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that amongst the signs of the last day is that you would see the barefooted Bedouins compete with each other in building tall buildings. This is remarkable because I invite anybody to look and go and visit Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain. These are places where 60 years ago I remember when I was in Kenya and they were complaining how there was no more money coming from Saudi Arabia after 9-11 and so on and so forth. And they were saying, well, you know, 60 years ago, we used to send money to Saudi Arabia to help the orphans and the madrasas there. Now you will find the people who only 60 years ago were barefooted Bedouins competing with each other in who can build the tallest building in the world. In fact, it said there's going to be six of the tallest buildings in the world in Dubai in the years to come. This is something the Prophet Muhammad was predicting 1,400 years ago. It is truly a sign of the last days. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also mentioned that the mosques would become like palaces. And this is the case, even though the Prophet وسلم, ordered simplicity in the houses of Allah, the fact is that they have become more and more fantastic and more and more money is being spent on these mosques with domes and floors and golden domes and floors and everything to match with so much lavish chandeliers and carpets like palaces. As the Prophet وسلم, said would happen. Also, the Prophet mentioned that trustworthiness would disappear, so much so that a person would be able to say, I know a trustworthy person in such and such town. I ask you yourself if maybe that is not the case today. Also, the Prophet mentioned that there will be an increase in killing. The Prophet called it harj, to the extent that the one who is being killed and the one who is killing, they don't even know. The one who is being killed doesn't know why he's being killed. The one who is killing doesn't know why he is doing the killing. I think this is the s describing the condition of some cities today where kids are shooting people. The person has no idea why he was shot. In fact, people are being shot merely just to prove themselves or for any type of madness that you can imagine. Not even to mention the massacres of so many people that is taking place due to terrorism, whether it is the terrorism of countries or the terrorism of organizations or individuals. We shouldn't really make a difference. It's all terror. When women and children and innocents get killed, it's terror by the hands of whoever it is. People do not know why they're killing or why they're being killed. To such an extent that it is unimaginable, just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted 1,400 years ago. Also, the Prophet mentioned that there would be the increase in the use of riba, which means usury, interest, credit cards, mortgages, things like that. In fact, the, to the extent that no one would be able to escape the dust of it, everybody will be affected by it. And this is without doubt the truth of the world economy today. The whole world economy is affected and controlled by banks and the use of interest money. Even though in Islam it is totally prohibited, even though in Christianity, up until the 16th, 17th century, riba was forbidden in Christendom as well. But yet today, it is something that controls the world economy to the extent that no one can escape it, just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted 1,400 years ago. 
The Prophet also said that there will be an increase in literacy. In fact, so many people will be able to read and write, but actually knowledge will decrease. Isn't that a type of paradox? More people will read, and what do we end up reading? Most of us, we read rubbish. We read rubbish stuff. But we can read, but knowledge, especially knowledge of the religion, despite the fact that more people can read, ignorance has become prevalent. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said, that religious knowledge would decrease, not by the books disappearing, not by, you know, knowledge being taken from the minds of the people. No, the knowledge in the sense of the books will be there, but the scholars, so that only ignorant people will remain. And people will ask them for religious verdicts, and they will give it, even though they are ignorant, and they will misguide themselves and misguide others. Anyone acquainted with the Muslim world today will be familiar with this. And the Prophet mentioned that the speakers will be many and the scholars will be few. And this is what we can find exactly. There are many speakers, many thinkers, many intellectuals, many people, alhamdulillah, giving dawah. Maybe not enough people, but the scholars, they are so few. And this is a type of sign of the last day that the scholars will be taken away. And this is exactly what we find happening. Also, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that there will be such an increase in musical instruments and Muslims will make it lawful even though it is forbidden. The use of musical instruments, it has been forbidden by the Prophet. Some Muslims will make it lawful. And there are many people who are saying it's allowed, even though it is very clearly mentioned in Sahil Bukhari, the most authentic collection of hadith. And this is mentioned here. This hadith where the Prophet predicted that the people will make it lawful even though the Prophet made it unlawful and it has come true. Just as the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Also, he mentioned there will be an increase in sexual promiscuity. Even though Islam is a religion that teaches chastity that a man and a woman should confine themselves to marriage, the Prophet said there will be an increase in sexual promiscuity. And I don't think anyone can deny that that is the state of the world today with highly sexualized images and even traditional societies that normally had a good traditional moral values. For example, like India, even in India, for example, promiscuity is becoming more and more common, hardly than it ever was before. Even in Muslim countries where the whole idea of sexual promiscuity is so against the teachings of Islam, it is unfortunately becoming more and more common. And the Prophet Muhammad said, that because of this, diseases would appear that people had never heard of before. Isn't that the case? AIDS, for example, diseases that people had never heard of before will arise due to sexual promiscuity. And this has taken place just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He mentioned that women will be naked although they are dressed. I don't think this is a better way of describing the dress of some women today which in all but means is nakedness. With the clothes that are so tight, they describe every shape of the body, which this technology did not exist to make those type of clothes in the time of the Prophet. Yet the Prophet Muhammad is describing how this nakedness amongst the women will become prevalent. And also the Prophet mentioned that there will be shouting in the mosques, something that is prohibited in Islam. And it's something that I have witnessed myself. And also the Prophet said the worst and the most ignorant people will become the leaders. And really, I have to say, if we look at some of the world leaders today, even of some of the superpowers, it seems as if what the Prophet said about the worst and most ignorant people becoming leaders seems to have taken place, exactly as the Prophet Muhammad said. Also, he mentioned that a man will obey his wife and disobey his mother, something really contrary to the teachings of Islam. He will rather listen to his friends than listen to his father. And this is something that we have find happening in the Muslim world, even though this is so against the teachings of Islam. Men will wear gold and silk and they will make it lawful, even though the Prophet has made it unlawful. People will abandon the religion of Islam for a small worldly gain. And keeping onto the religion will be hold, like holding two hot coals. I am mentioning all of these things and there are many, many more things that the Prophet Muhammad mentioned 
But these are some of the small signs concerning the events that will take place before the last day. And as we can see, these things that I have gone through almost without exception, they have come true in a way that is so, so clear and so, so obvious and so, so apparent. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the authenticated miracles of the Prophet Muhammad. I mean, of course, the greatest miracle that was given to the Prophet Muhammad was the Qur'an. But there are many authenticated miracles, and it is not often known and mentioned, that were done through the Prophet Muhammad by the power of God. For example, even at the birth of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, when he was taken by the wet nurse Halima, and she was the only one willing to take him, even though he was an orphan. And because he was an orphan, no one was really expecting that they would get any reward and they would get well paid. But, but Halima, his wet nurse, and that was the tradition of the Arabs, they used to send their babies out into the desert where it was more healthy to be nursed by the Bedouin women. And Halima, she took this responsibility, even though she was not really expecting much reward. And from the moment she did this, she found that everything changed. Even the goats in her tribe started to get fatter. Wherever they went, there was grass for them to feed. She herself became stronger and more healthy and was producing more milk. And as long as the Prophet ﷺ was with her, she found these blessings happen. In fact, she commented to her husband and to the tribe that surely we have been given a blessed child. When the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ before he was a prophet, one of the things that would happen was the stones would speak to him and they would say to him, Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah. And this is the type of things that would happen. These are some miracles and true and authentic miracles that happened to the prophet. Don't go away. We're going to talk about some more of those after the break in the proof that Islam is the truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And we're talking about the authenticated miracles of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Things that were witnessed by his companions who lived with him and saw these things and recorded them. And we have these things until today. And we're only mentioning a few because we don't have too much time. We can't go thoroughly into every single one. So we're just mentioning a few of them. There's one famous incident. When the Prophet Muhammad, when he used to deliver the sermon, the Friday sermon, in the mosque in Medina, there was a certain post which he used to lean against. But then he decided it would be better if he stood on a type of pulpit. And so they had constructed some steps. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam would walk up and climb and stand on those steps. And he would deliver his sermon from there. And when he walked up and climbed on the step, the post that he used to lean on began, a sound came out of it, like a crying sound. And the Prophet went and stroked this. The post was crying because the Prophet Muhammad was not leaning on it anymore. And this is how the sadness the post felt because the Prophet had left it. It's an amazing thing how this crying noise was heard coming out of the post. There are many narrations that are reported where animals used to come and complain to the Prophet Muhammad. There was one example when some companions had stolen the eggs from the nest of a bird. And this bird was seen flapping around the head of the Prophet Muhammad. And the Prophet said, who are those people who have stolen the eggs from the nest of the bird? And he told them to return it, that his mother is distressed because of what you have done. Also, a camel complained to the Prophet Muhammad that its owner was overloading it. And from this, the Prophet Muhammad warned us and told us not even to oppress the animals under our care and that we should be careful not to overburden them with more than that they are able to take. There is a famous and beautiful story how Abu Huraira, who was one of the companions of the Prophet, used to feel so hungry. Sometimes he used to faint at the door of the mosque and people used to tread on him because they thought he was mad. And one day he went to Abu Bakr and he didn't want to tell anyone that he was really almost dying of hunger. So he went and he asked Abu Bakr a question about the Qur'an, hoping that Abu Bakr would recognize his weakness, but he didn't. And he went to Umar and the same thing happened. But when he went to the Prophet, straight away the Prophet said, come with me. 
He told Abu Huraira and to come with him and he went to his house and he asked his wives, what do we have in the house to eat? They had nothing except a bowl of milk. This is the house of the Messenger of God. In the house of the Messenger of God, amongst all his wives, all they have to drink between them is a bowl of milk. And the Prophet said, give it to me. Then he said to Abu Huraira, go and get the people of the bench. Now the people of the bench were all the poor people who used to sleep next to the mosque. And Abu Huraira was thinking, if I call them, there's not going to be enough milk for me. There's hardly enough milk for me, let alone to feed all the people of the bench. But then he thought, I must obey the order of the Prophet Muhammad. So he said, okay, I will do it, even because this is what the Prophet said. So he called them. And the Prophet got Abu Huraira to sit on his left. And now in Islam, when we pass something, we pass it from the right. And so the Prophet passed his bowl of milk from the right, going around all the people. And every time Abu Huraira is thinking, there's not going to be enough milk left for me, there's not going to be enough milk left for me. And eventually when the milk got to him, he drank from the milk. And then the Prophet Muhammad said, drink again. And he drank again. And then the third time the Prophet said, drink again. And Abu Huraira said, I can't drink, I am full. This is a miracle, of course. How the small amount of milk was so much to feed so many people. And this is not the only time such an event happened. Also, the Prophet made a miraculous night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem and up from Jerusalem through the heavens where Allah gave him the five prayers. And he saw many wonderful signs in the heavens. Now, many people when they heard this, they actually started to disbelieve in Islam. People came to Abu Bakr. They said, oh Abu Bakr, you know what your friend is saying now? He's saying he went on a journey to Jerusalem in one night and then went up through the heavens. Abu Bakr said, if that's what the Prophet said, he did, it happened, because he never lies. Anyway, people started saying, prove to us that this is the case. So the Prophet Muhammad, he described a caravan that he had seen on the way, meaning a caravan, you know, of camels and a trade caravan. He described this caravan and what it looked like. And he also described to the people Jerusalem and what it was like. Two days later, the caravan arrived and it was exactly how the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, had described it. And then when the people asked the caravan, they had come from Jerusalem, and they described to the people how was Jerusalem and it matched exactly the description of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, another great miracle that was given to the Prophet Muhammad was the splitting of the moon. The pagan Arabs kept asking the Prophet for a sign, kept asking him for a sign. So he eventually, Allah gave him this sign and the moon was split in two. So the two halves of the moon were on each side of the horizon. Of course, the pagan Arabs did still not believe in spite of all of that. Anyway, those are just some of the miracles of the Prophet Muhammad, which Allah gave to him. And I'm only mentioning them by way of completeness, because of course, really, for those of you who are thinking, for those of you who are thinking deeply, our whole series has been about something really miraculous. Those proofs and evidences that we have presented to you, through which and by which you might know that the Qur'an is truly what it claims to be, the Word of God. That Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is what he claimed to be, the final messenger of God, of Allah, sent for the benefit and the mercy of all of mankind. We have discussed matters rational and matters mysterious. We have talked about all sorts of wonderful things. But the question I need to ask you now, what is preventing you from accepting the truth that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is indeed the final messenger of Allah? Is it fear? Are you afraid? What will the people say if I become Muslim? What will people say about me? What will happen to me at work? What will happen to me at school? What will happen to me in my home with my parents? Is this what is preventing you from accepting the truth? Oh, my dear people, you should be more afraid of Allah 
You should be more afraid of your Lord. You should be more afraid of the punishment of the hellfire that awaits those people who reject truth. A fire where Allah will burn the skin and recreate the skin so that people can taste the punishment. A place where water, boiling water will be poured on people's faces that will burn their faces and burn out their insides. This is the punishment saved for those people who reject truth. Is it not more appropriate and worthy that you should be afraid of that? Are you not afraid that Allah will send a punishment upon you like he did send a punishment upon Noah and his people about the people of Sodom and Gomorrah? The people of Lot, the prophet Lot? Are you not afraid that a chastisement will come from your Lord in this life? Maybe it is arrogance. Maybe it is pride. Maybe you think that the virtue of belonging to a certain tribe or a certain nation or a certain country, maybe you think you are so powerful, but Allah is more powerful. Have you not traveled the earth and see what has happened to those people before? Civilization, strong in power and might. And what is left of them? Ruins. Where did all their science and their technology and their wisdom and their intelligence lead them? if it did not take them to the belief and the acceptance of the truth that Allah is the true object of worship, that Muhammad is the true messenger. Maybe it is, my dear people, that you are not sincere. You do not care about truth. You only care about the things of this world. But you should care. You should care about the things of this world because the true happiness of this world is in obeying your Lord and knowing your Lord and worshipping your Lord. How many people of this world leave it and they never tasted the sweetest thing in life? The sweetest thing in this life is to know Allah and to follow His religion and His guidance that He sent down. All I can say ultimately is that Allah has guided me to Islam and it is the happiest and the best and the most complete way of life a human being could ever live. I just ask you to do one thing. Pray with your heart, with your soul, with your mind. Ask and pray God in humility, in sincerity. Raise your hands and say and beg, O oh God, guide me to the truth. Open my heart to the truth. If Islam is the truth, guide me to it and make me happy with it and help me to follow it and help me to be a sincere Muslim if it is the truth, O oh God, creator of the heavens and the earth. May Allah guide me, you, always to the truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with you always.